Hello everybody and welcome to your next uh, C Sharp XNA platformer tutorial and this tutorial we're going to be continuing with the animation class now if we go to animation.cs I believe before that in the parameters I had this as sprite batch uh, if you uh, so you just change the game time it has to be game time in this parameter uh, in this parameter so to continue from where we left off what we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, two new variables stop updating and we're going to have default alpha and uh, the reason okay we're gonna have stop updating uh, you're gonna see soon but the reason why we have a default alpha and we're gonna name this false and we're gonna say default alpha is equal to alpha uh, but the, the reason why we have uh, the default alpha is because the way we're doing fading is going to be different than uh, we might do for other uh, types of animations. The way we're fading is we're going to be having a black image, right? And, and the image is we're going to uh, change its transparency uh, based on we're going to change its transparency based on on, on how you're fading it, if you're fading in or fading out, right? But with different types of uh, if, if we don't want to do fading animation with that black image, uh, fading works differently. So in this case, uh, uh, when when we when our alpha value is 255, that means we fully show something, right? So if I had uh, some text and I had a transparency of 255, it would fully show the text. And if I had a transparency of zero, then you will not see the text, and and so on and so forth. With the black image, though is that we're going to say that when we're zero which means when the transparency is zero that means you see everything and when the transparency is 255 you don't see anything because the black image is going to be over every single thing in our, in our screen so uh, like that is, is going to work a bit differently so i hope you don't confuse the two and that's why we have to have our default alpha is equal to alpha because when we set our alpha value we need to uh uh, we will when we reset it. Uh, we need to reset it to the default alpha uh, below. So I'll show you what I mean just now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say public override update, and we can erase this because we don't have anything going on in that one. So we're gonna say that is if is active. So you go to true. Then we we do our fading. If not, then we set alpha equal to default alpha. Okay. So whether our alpha starts at zero or if it's the default one is 255, uh, it will reset it to that value. So right here, now we have to say that we're going to say that if increase, or we'll say if not increase, then we're going to say alpha uh, minus equals float game time dot lapsed game time dot total seconds. Okay, uh, it's gonna be that, or we'll say yeah, uh, we'll say the fade speed times that, and the reason why we're doing it like that, or it should be total seconds. So the reason why we're doing it like that is that when it fades, we'll fade at the same speed on every single computer. So we're gonna say that uh, we'll say else alpha plus equals fade speed times float game time elapsed game time dot total second oh. okay so we want to have this within another loop which is if uh, if not stop up updating sorry stop updating then we do this stuff right here okay and what we're going to say, we're going to say that if alpha is uh, less than or equal to 0, with 0, 0.0f, then we're going to set it to 0.0f, 0, 0.0, yeah. And we're going to say else if alpha is greater than or equal to 255, then we set that equal to or actually it should be we're gonna say if it's greater than or equal to one then we set to one uh, so the alpha is, like you know how I was saying from 0 to 255 so in this case it's from 0 to 1 so if you uh, if 
I was kind of confusing between something else. But yeah, um, generally, for most for the most part, alpha is from zero to two hundred fifty-five. But the way we're going to be doing it is from zero to one. So one means it is uh fully. That means it's fully. It's non-transparent, so it's opaque. And if it's zero, then it means it's fully transparent. So, anyways, we're gonna do like that. So, in the is active if is active if statement, we're gonna say that uh, we're gonna say that if our alpha is equal to our timer, then we're going to pause it for a bit. So, we're gonna say stop updating. Stop updating equals to true. So when we set this equal to true and wait, I'm getting error. But yeah, because it shouldn't be the timer. What is the, what's our, okay, our activate value. So yeah, our activate value is going to be, so yeah, that's what we have to check for. So we're going to say that if our, if alpha is equal to activate value, then stop updating equals to true. So then our timer needs to subtract from the game time dot elapsed game time okay so what that's going to do is that it's going to uh, each time it goes to the game loop is going to uh, subtract from it uh, until it reaches a certain value so what we're going to say is we're going to say that if timer if timer dot total seconds oh man seconds is less than or equal to zero then we got to set increase is equal to not increase so if increase was true then it was set to false and if it was false it was set to true and then we got to set our our timer equal to the default time for the default time and last but not least we got to set stop updating to false okay so what that's going to do the reason why we have this is that once we fade out, we don't want to just fade in immediately. We want to wait a certain amount of time, a certain amount of seconds before we fade in. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> or maybe not even seconds, maybe a few milliseconds, etc., etc. But it, it doesn't look great when you fade out immediately and fade right back in. So that's why we have that in there. So that is it for the update, and we are done with the fade animation class. Well, actually, we're not done for it yet. We got to uh, specify some properties, and, and after we're done the properties, we should end this tutorial, and then we'll finish off with the whole animation done by the next, by the following tutorial. So some of the properties are, are one of, yeah, one of the properties that we're going to be using is, I'm just going to see that if we made one for it right here. Okay, no, so what we're going to do is that we're going to make a, a public float um, alpha and it's gonna have regular get and set return alpha and we're gonna say set alpha alpha equals to value but this this one is going to be a virtual uh, it's, it's going to be a virtual property and the reason being is because we're going to override it over here and we're gonna do something different with it so we're gonna say uh, alpha okay <coughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that we're gonna set alpha equal to okay whatever just change that to return alpha alpha is equal to value but this time we're gonna say that if alpha equals to 1.0 f then we're gonna set increase equal to false and else if alpha is equal to 0, 0.0 f then we set increase to true so if we if we edit it with the fade animation class, then we we just set increase whatever defaults, and we can't do that with the animation class because increase doesn't uh, exist in the animation dot, um, class as well. So what we want to do is we also want to uh, we want to be able to change the activate value. So we're gonna say flow activate value. and okay I probably change the language settings okay so we're gonna say get uh, return activate value 
and if you have a different name for them then you know exactly what to do and we're gonna say that activate value is equal to our value oh we also got to gotta set our fade speed and our, our and our fade like what time the the default timer but one thing that we should do is uh for f for alpha and uh, I'm not gonna do this here it's up to you but for alpha and for the activate value you, sh you should probably use a math helper class to clamp it down so in case you accidentally put a value that's lower than zero or higher than one then it will uh, clamp it within that range but I I won't do for this tutorial since I'm 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 already over the time. So what we're gonna gonna need to do is we're gonna need, we need a fade speed, and uh, we're gonna return the fade speed, and we'll set fade speed equal to value, and we need to set the the timer. So time span, timer, and we get the timer and we set the timer equal we'll set default timer equal default time equal to value and we'll say timer is equal to default time okay so that is it for this tutorial and the next tutorial uh, we will finish this off and we'll have our full animation in motion. So thanks for watching this. Hope you enjoyed it and bye.